the Atama Handes. Father Lord, we thank you. We give you the glory and we give you the praise. Thank you, Lord, for tonight. Thank you because you are set to speak to the nations. Thank you because you are set to proclaim your fame. And you are set to show your strength and your power and your might to the nations tonight. Thank you for your word that is coming out with power and with strength. That has the power also to perform the intention for which you speak them. For as snow and rain comes out of heaven and waters the earth. And causes the seed to bud and to sprout. Giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So also is every word that proceeds out of your mouth. It will not return back to you void. But it will prosper in that which you have sent it to accomplish. We bless your name tonight because your word is set again to prosper over our lives and over the nations of the earth. Even as it comes out with power tonight, we ask that you give us a receptive heart. Give us accuracy in the spirit and teach our heart to respond willfully to your word. In the name of Jesus, that our life may bring you profiting and that you may be glorified. Thank you, Lord, because you are God. Thank you because you always answer us. In Jesus' most powerful name, I pray. Amen and amen and amen. Um, I want to welcome everyone again from wherever you're watching me from all over the world. Um, Apostle Victor Aida is my name and this is Life Spring Assembly um, right here in the heart of London. Um, and I have a very short, precise assignment tonight and it's to bring the word of God to you with precision um, and with um, so much authority tonight because I said I, go, I know that God is set to do amazing things tonight across the nations of the earth um, and I all I need you to do is let all I need you to do is lend me your ears for the next few minutes as I declare to you the mind of God um, it is paramount that men flow with the motions of heaven in the times that we're living in um, because there are things that are said to take place in our realm and God is just looking for men who would provide alignment who would submit their will to carry out his own will um, amen and then God will begin to perform and perfect the things that has been settled from the foundations of the earth now God is not as confused as the leaders of the world are God is not as perplexed as the nations are in perplexity tonight all over the world God is ready ever ready and his works have been finished from the foundations of the earth and they are just unfolding as time reveals them. Because the Bible says day unto day, they utter speech. And night unto night, they reveal knowledge. The, 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 these are the heavens, the Bible says. They declare His glory. They declare His wonders. The Bible says, though they do not have voice, yet there is no language in which their voice is not heard. It simply means God is speaking unhindered. Okay? Either men apply their hearts, or either men take time to pause from the madness and the tussling, hustling and tussling, going on to listen to the sound and the voice of their maker. God's faithfulness compels him to continue to speak and to continue to work and to continue to do. If there are a few people that will just lend their ears and apply their heart to what God is doing tonight, you could be the change that the earth has been waiting for. You could be the chain that our generation is waiting for. And I believe that in my time, in the times that we're living in, I will be one of the changes that would happen. I will be a bright light that will shine in my time. And I believe as I'm speaking to you, I am programming times, lights that will shine. Because word, my Libra and those car are lights and they activate light. Okay? So I'm going to be reading to you tonight from... Um, Psalm 104. Tonight is going to be very short, very sharp, a very um, clear assignment. And, and, and by the strength and the wisdom provided by the Spirit, um, I will declare it to you and I will pray with you and you will be blessed in the name of Jesus. I have titled, or the Holy Spirit has breathed upon me um, that tonight um, I should speak about the mighty God. Okay? Tonight I should speak about the mighty God. So I'm speaking about the mighty God tonight. The mighty God um, and I know um, you would have a mental immediacy of what that means or you would think oh yeah I know God is mighty is a mighty God you know so many times these things hinder us from actually experiencing God by our pre 
uh, preoccupation and pre um, meditation of the vastness and how great God is oftentimes it becomes we become so familiar with phrases and words and chants that we never really experience the gravity or the intensity the weight of God's glory so tonight I do not make light of scriptures I do not make light of the word of God I come to you with trembling and fear to declare to you the counsel of the king and to proclaim the fame of God to you to declare his wonders to you as one who has been given the, the privilege to bring come bearing the word of God in his mouth um, I want to read to you from Psalms 104 tonight and I'm just gonna pick verses at random as the Spirit inspires but I'm going to start from verse 1. I'm reading from the um, NLT version of the Bible, Psalms 104. Okay, the book of Psalm number 104. I'll read from verse 1. It says, Let all that I am praise the Lord. Oh, my Lord. Oh, Lord, my God, how great you are. I'll start again. Let all that I am praise the Lord. Oh, Lord, my God, how great you are. You are. I'll read that verse one more time. Let all that I am praise the Lord. Let all that I am. Let all that I am praise the Lord. Oh Lord my God. How great are you. Now this is a remark. This is a statement coming from someone who has had a time to reflect on the magnitude of God. The size. The weight. The vastness the all overwhelming awe of this God that we serve who is not just a judge or a king he is also our father he is also the lover of our soul let all that I am praise the Lord oh Lord my God how great you are verse 2 says you are dressed in a robe of light Woo! You stretch out the starry curtains of the heavens. You lay out the rafters of your home in the rain clouds. You make clouds your chariot. You ride upon the wings of the wind. The winds are your messengers and flames of fire, your servants. You ride upon the wings. And I perceive today that God is coming to someone's home tonight. And he is going to ride on the wings of the wind. And he will make a landfall in your house tonight. Wherever you're watching me from. What does it mean for God to ride upon the wings of the wind? Listen to me. The winds are his messengers. The winds are angels. The, the Bible used the word winds to represent the invisible nature. But Libra Andos, the invisible nature of the messengers of God, which are angels, the mighty ones, who hearken to his voice, who hearken, who, who do his will, hearken into the sound of his word. When men begin to give sound, my Libra Andos, Kabailos, listen to me. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So you understand that the word of God is God. And God riding upon the wings of the wind simply means when we speak the word of God, when God speaks, and how does God speak? My Libra Andos, God speaks in many ways, but in this day, he speaks through his words. He puts his words in the mouth of his prophets. He puts his words in the, in his, in the mouth of his apostles. He puts his words in the mouth of his servants, and they declare the word of the Lord. And as we speak, my Libra Andos, as the Holy Spirit gives utterance and we speak the word of God, the angels of God carries those words. And they go to bring about a performance of those words. He rides on the wings of the wind. And listen to me, the wind is set tonight. And he's set to blow in your direction. My Libra and those caballos. And so what it will carry are the words that I'm speaking. And so all I need you to do is lend me your ears and just lend me your faith. My Libra and the For there shall be a performance of the words that I speak tonight. Because there are angels on standby, ready to carry my words, which are the words of God. He carries Valados, he rides upon the way. You know, it is often easy for you to read the scriptures. 
and they sound spooky and big and profound, yet you don't understand what it means. It's just going over your head. You lay the rafter of your home in the rain clouds. You make the cloud your chariot. You ride upon the wings of the wind. It's easy to read these things and go, wow, this God, God is awesome. Wow, he rides upon the... Now, if you look up in the cloud, you never see someone riding on the cloud. Do you understand that? Yet he rides. But Libra Andos, he makes the clouds his chariot. You ride upon the wings. I'm bringing, I'm comparing spiritual things to spiritual tonight. I'm using spiritual words, spiritual wisdom to interpret spiritual words to you tonight. So that you can move from the face, my Libra, of the text on the pages of the scripture. And you begin to eat the meat. You begin to partake of that which is good. The word of God. Verse 4 then says, the winds are his messengers. So God riding upon the wings of the wind, he, his messengers carry his word as though they are carrying him on their back. Have you ever seen those super, have you ever seen those fiction movies where you see a man riding upon a mighty eagle? And then the eagle flaps his wing and the rider, rider, the rider of the eagle, have you seen the movie called Avatar? And you see that they, they have those creatures that they, they, they bond themselves to and they can jump on the back of those creatures and, and ride them and those creatures will fly and take them to wherever they want to go. So think about the rider, Malibra Andos Kabailiska, because Jesus, Malika, he is the word, yet he is the express image of the invisible God. He is, when God was going to save humanity, he sent his word. And so if God was to save you from whatever predicament you found yourself now, his formula hasn't changed. He will have to send you a word. And God is sending you a word tonight. And how does God come to you? God comes to you in form of words. And that those words are carried on the wings of the wind. As though the winds are eagles and they carry God. They carry his word and his word is God. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. So when, when you see men of God begin to speak the word of God, there are angels on standby. Those angels are wind, and they can carry elaborados. They can carry the intentions of God. Spoken out, they can bring them, carry them, to bring them to pass in your life. And what attracts those angels to your house is your faith. My Libra Andos, it is like a man who scatters the seed. As I'm speaking tonight, I am scattering the seed. And what I'm scattering tonight is, I am reaffirming to you how mighty your God is. There is nothing bigger than Him. There is nothing too hard for Him to do. He is the Lord God of all flesh. Is anything too hard for Him to do? Whatever it is you are into or you are experiencing across the world tonight, wherever you're hearing me from, from your, 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 your situation is not, is not different. Whatever you're going through is not too hard for God to do. It is not hard for God to change your life. It is not hard for God to give you a new song. It is not hard for God to put a smile on your face. It is not hard for God to heal you. I don't care how terminal that terminal disease is. God makes a way where there seems to be no way. I don't know how tough and how tight things have been. God is a mighty God. Abraham does. And as I speak these words, the angels will carry the words and they will come to whoso, Bible says, whosoever will believe. Whosoever will believe. There shall be nothing impossible to those who believe. So if you have faith tonight, I can tell you the wind is blowing in your direction. And what the, the wind is not just blowing so that you can feel my Libra and the chill on your screen. It is bringing a performance of the words that you are listening to. The counsel of God from eternity that I am speaking to you in time. He rides upon the wings of the wind. And the winds are his messengers. Psalm 104 verse 4. Flames of fire are his servants. Listen to me. Fire causes change. And fire does not negotiate change. It forces and compels the change. Ibrahim dos Caballos. I don't care how massive a building is. When you introduce fire, the building is coming down. I don't care how tough a metal is. When you introduce it, when you introduce fire, the metal will bend. Or even better, the metal will melt. And then you can form it into anything else. 
So perhaps a metal has been formed into a spoon and I need a fork. All I need to do is introduce fire. And listen to me, the once rigid spoon that wouldn't change shape, when it comes in contact with fire, it will melt and then I can sculpt it and forge it and make it into whatever I need it to be. And listen to me, if I pick spoons and I melt them together, guess what? I can make a knife out of it. And then if I don't need a knife anymore, if I introduce fire, I can melt the, I can melt the, the knife and make it into a door handle. In other words, I'm saying to you, whatever your life looks like, when the fire of God comes, God can make you into, or whatever situation you're battling with, when fire is introduced, fire is able to dissolve it and make it into whatever you need in this moment for your life to gain movement, for your life to gain ascendance, for your life to see and experience a positive change. God can change anything. And guess how he does it? He makes his servants flame of fire. In other words, God can send. I was says, is your word not like a consuming fire? God can send his word to you. And his word will come like a fire. And it will consume your enemies round about you. And it will create a change in your life. And it will melt what needs, needs to be melted so that it can be made into something else. And you know what it is in your life that has been there and has defied your prayers and has defied your fasting. And it's, I bring to you the word of God tonight that is able to force and compel a change. I am not negotiating tonight. I am declaring the will of God that has the ability to suppress every other will. If you have faith tonight, the angels are carrying my words, the word of God, and they are flying. Radima Koshalaba, they are bringing God. His word upon the wings of the wind in your direction tonight to cause a change in the name of Jesus. You serve a mighty God. We serve a mighty God. Verse 5 says, you place the world on its foundation so it will never be. Listen to me. The world means systems. And God set it on its foundations. And you know the civilization that we're living in were fashioned by the greed of men. Yet, God still laid it on the foundation. It simply means God will take over whenever he chooses. And listen to me, we're living in a generation where God is finding an entry again into the realms of men. And he will cause changes. He will set up his own system. He will set up his own house. And the mountains of the house of the Lord will be exalted above every other mountain. It will happen in our generation. The church will be once again relevant. And prophets will once again speak over nations. And the inhabitants of the, of the earth will hear what God has to say. Because God has placed the world on its foundations. So it will never be moved. He clothed the earth with floods of water. Oh my God, time will fail me to explain this in details. Water that covers even the mountains. Brandos Cavalos. At your command, the waters fled. At the sound of your thunder, it hurried away. The mountains rose and the valley sank to the levels you decreed. Then you set a firm boundary for the seas so they would never again cover the earth. Listen to me. The psalmist was talking about when God destroyed the earth with water in the time of Noah. Now, if you don't have, if you're not deep in the spirit, you, this will go over your head again. You will understand. Listen to me. He was speaking about the past, yet he's speaking about the present, yet he's speaking about the future. And those who are prophetic will be able to travel back in time and also travel into the future. He clothed the earth with floods of water. Water that covered even the mountains. Listen to me. When the mountains began to exalt themselves, when the mountain, and by mountain I mean the civilization of men, that was set in place outside the boundaries or the jurisdiction of the government of God. When men began to decide how they wanted to live their life, when men began to decide how they wanted to run their economy, when men began to decide how they wanted to fashion their society, fashion their culture, fashion their tradition, when men set up a way of life that was apart from the life that God gives, they set up a civilization and, and God became displeased with the earth. And Bible says in, in Genesis chapter 6 that God, God regretted, he was in deep sorrow that he made man and he was so angry and he 
He ended humanity by a mighty flood. And he spared a man who found grace with him. Rebound goes for the Bible says, and, and, and Noah found grace with God. So God spared Noah and his family in a time when the world was going to be wiped out. And listen to me, you have lived, my Libra Aldos. If you survived this pandemic, you were part of the ark. You were in the ark. God rescued you. And listen to me, the waters, my Libra Aldos Cavailos. Don't, don't think the rain is over. Oh my God, do not think the rain is over. Ricandos Kubaila, Igra Andos Cavalos. God is working in the time that we're living in. And do not be do not be distracted by the noise of the press. If there is a time to be spiritual than ever, it is now. Listen to me. God covered the mountains with water. The Bible says in, in, in Psalm 104, verse 5. It says, You place the world on its foundation, so it will never be moved. You clothed the earth with floods of water. Water that covered even the mountains. Listen to me. When the pandemic became secure, all the mountains were covered. Oh my God, I wish you would be spiritual tonight and understand spiritual things. God covered the mountains. He covered all the mountains. Nobody could speak a word. Everybody went into hiding. When you hear waters in the scripture, Waters represent different things. Waters will represent the word. Water will represent the word. And waters will represent people. And waters will also represent trouble. Sometimes God will call it deep waters. And the Bible says that God covered, he clothed the earth with floods of water. Water that covered even the mountains. It means even the elevated grounds were swallowed up by these waters. When the pandemic problem became severe, the whole world was swallowed up in fear and in trembling. For God covered the earth with waters again. But let me tell you what follows the covering. Ibrahim does Kabailos. It says, and at your command, the waters fled. Listen to me. Up until now, the intensity of the virus waned and decreased. Not because they found a solution. At the utterance of the word of God, the voice of God, the waters fled. The waters will only flee at the sound of God. And how does the, how does the sound of God come? By his servant who gives sound to his words. And of course, the angels will carry the words of the servant of God and bring about a performance. So every word that I'm speaking to you tonight, the angels are on standby to bring a performance. They are carrying these words and they are bringing it to pass in your life. And I'm saying to you, your sick bodies will be healed tonight. Your confusions will be removed tonight. Light will replace your darkness tonight. Strength will replace your weakness. Prosperity will come in the place of poverty tonight. In the name of Jesus, your family will experience salvation. Your loved, one, your loved ones will be saved. Your children will be saved. Your husband will be saved. Your friends will be saved. Revival will come into your colleges. Revival will come into the universities. Revival will come into the secondary schools. It will happen. In the name of Jesus, there will be economical, there will be financial revival. It will happen. But it will come. My Libra Andos, as the sons of the kingdom begin to gain stature and begin to gain ascendance. Learning how to mount up their wings as eagles. Ibra Andos Kobalos. The Bible says, Akalos Kekeli, Abrahadinako Silos. Listen to me. The Bible says, for we are like the wind, the spirit is like, the spirit is wind. It says, for who knows the pathway of the wind? You can only hear it, the sound of it. But you can never know where it is blowing from or where it is blowing to. You can only feel the chill on your body and hear the sound of it. It says, so also is a man who is spiritual. Nobody can discern it. The reason why the devil can so easily discern you is because you have not turned to wind yet. And until you turn to wind, God cannot ride on you. In other words, you cannot carry the word. Only winds, the messengers of God, can carry his message. His message is his word and it is him. And it rides upon the wings of the wind. That was those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings. He grabbed those while they mounting up with wings so that they can carry messages. Because he makes wings his messengers. Until then, you cannot partner with angels. 
because they are also messengers who carry words. Ibrahim does. And then when Daniel began to pray for 21 days and he began to fast and pray, from the first day he began to pray, the Lord sent a dispatch from heaven carrying a message. They didn't bring a box. They didn't bring a treasure chest. The angel came with a word. A word which was the answer to the question that was the matter that was indicting the heart of Daniel for which he set himself aside and began to pray. God placed a response on the wings of the wind and dispatched an angel to bring a message of peace to Daniel. And even though the angels was withstood, the angel had to call for his reinforcement because Daniel didn't stop praying. And then God sent another dispatch to ensure that the wind carried the word to Daniel. And guess what? Daniel became a conveyor of the same word. That is why the things that were spoken about to Daniel, the, the, the response to the prayer of Daniel was documented. And now we read it as the book of Daniel chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3. And it was named after Daniel because till today, Daniel, the servant of God, his spirit still carries the message of God. So when you read it, you don't just say, oh, scriptures, page 25. No, you say Daniel. You say Daniel, the book of Daniel. What is in the book of Daniel? The messages of God that Daniel was entrusted with. And the message outlived him. So even though the body of Daniel is dead and decomposed, his spirit still bears the word of God. Because we still read Daniel. And we still mention Daniel. And we still read Daniel. And when you hear a man who went into the lion's tomb, the first name that comes to your mind is Daniel. When you heard a man who was a teenager, a stranger in a foreign land, a prisoner, a slave, who rose to prominent Daniel. A man who counseled and instructed kings for four, four reigns. Daniel. A man who, in whom was found the spirit of excellence, in whom was found no fault. Daniel. He prayed to God. He, he prayed until he became wind. A Libra andos cabaios. And when he became wind, God entrusted him with a word that he carried to his generation and it transcended him. And God had to tell Daniel, he said, you for you. He said, these things will not happen in your time. For you, just, just quit this mortal realm and come up here where your reward is waiting for you but you see upon your spirit we have committed that word that you traveled in the spirit for it will out it will outlast you generations generations and decades and centuries down the line men will still be quoting daniel because a man became spirit so i'm saying to you whatever you're crying about the mundane things they are too beneath you stop crying for those things there are greater purposes that your life was designed to accomplish for God. And guess what? Daniel never lacked. He was mighty. He was famous. He was powerful in the most powerful provinces, the most powerful nations in the earth. Because he became wind and God could ride upon his wings. Men who carried the word of God, the oracles of God. Those are the men that God is raising in this time, in this generation. God is raising oracles for himself. He is raising mouthpieces for him. Men who are of stature, who can carry Malibra, in whose hearts are the burdens of God, who can communicate the intentions and the intent with intensity, the burdens of God, the intentions of God from eternity that are yet to find the expression in time. And these men will, they will deny themselves of pleasure and they will, they will travel until they become wind. And what does it mean to be wind? You don't get troubled by the things of this world. Nothing of this world can hold you to ransom. Can you hold wind to ransom? No, you can't. Until you get to a place where nothing of this world can hold you to ransom. The lack of whatever you think you don't have should not be able to hold you to ransom. Or the pressure of whatever you feel you're under should not hold you to ransom. In fact, the reason why you're still crumbling under that pressure is because you haven't become wind yet. Listen to me. When wind comes, a Libra andos, if wind makes its way into water, it becomes a storm. If wind begins to blow, 
at 300 miles per hour, it can uproot a mighty building. It can uproot a mighty tree when you become a wind and you carry and the force that drives the wind with speed is the word of God. Is the spirit of God. For the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Ahab was riding a chariot made with wood and metals. And God gave him a head start. But when the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, the spirit of God came upon Elijah. The Bible says he outran. Elijah became like the wind. Ibrahim does. He blew past Ahab. Because think about a chariot pulled by the strongest horses. And this was the king's chariot. It wasn't just a warrior's chariot. It was the king's chariot. So it will be the fastest one. Think about the pace at which horses can run. Pulling the chariot in full flight. Because the king, it wasn't just a friendly, it wasn't just a stroll or a casual parade. The king was taken off in full flight because the, the, the prophet told him, he said, make, he said, run now. I hear the sound of a bond and this rain is going to be turbulent, so run. And so the king put the child to flight. And he, was, he must have been at his top speed when the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, a prophet. He outran the king of the earth who was carried by the technology of the earth. He, by the hand of the spirit, he outran. And I, Milandos, because God rides upon the wings of the wind. And so I'm speaking to you tonight. In whatever situation you find yourself, that, that seems like your life is crawling. Like everyone is just going past you and your life is just moving around circles and you're not gaining speed, you're not moving nowhere. Listen to me. The hand of the Lord is coming upon you tonight. Same as it was in the time of Elijah, the, the Spirit of the Lord is taking hold of your business and is moving it with speed. You will have unprecedented breakthroughs. Malibra andos, for God will give you wisdom. And how does this hand fall upon you? It is not just some spooky hand. A strange wisdom will enter you. A supernatural idea will come into you. That when the world hears it, they would say, where has this been all oh, this while? Where have you been? For, for, where have you been? We have been waiting for this. We have been looking for this. And all of a sudden, overnight, you, became, you become a world sensation. Because the Spirit of the Lord, the hand of God, came upon you. The wind of the Spirit that propels men forward. And I speak over you tonight. Your ministry is being propelled forward in full, in full flight. By the hand of the Spirit, in the name of Jesus, the hand of the Lord is coming upon your family, upon your children, upon your education, upon every of your pursuit in righteousness. The hand of God is coming upon it and it will gain speed by the supernatural strength of God. For we serve a mighty God who rides upon the wings of the wind. Let me wrap up what I was saying and now pray with you. Like I said, I don't want this to be long tonight. But I'm just gonna pick verses in, in at random and then I'll pray. It says it commands the water. No, you clothed the earth with floods of water, the water that covered even the mountains. See what happens now. At your command, the waters fled. At the sound of your thunder, I don't have time to tell you about the thunder tonight. The word, the sound of God, at the sound of your thunder, it hurried away. The mountains rose. Ibrahim does Kaba. Listen to me. These are the mountains of God now. For the mountains of this world have had their few time. And it is time for the mountains of God to rise in replacement. For there were some mountains. The Bible says there were some mountains. The Bible says these mountains were covered by the waters. And when God was ready to reveal his own mountains, he spoke and the waters fled. Then mountains rose. Why would the Bible say mountain rose when there were mountains before? Because look at it, it says, it says, it sets the world on its foundation so it will not be moved. You cluttered the earth with floods of water and the water covered even the mountains. So there were some mountains that got covered by the troubles. And at your command, the waters fled. Hey, when God was ready, at the sound of your thunder, it hurried away. The mountains rose. These are new mountains, guys. 
And listen to me, I don't care how giant a technology company looks. I don't, I don't care how giant a fashion company looks. I don't care how giant a political institution is. God gave the inhabitants of the earth as many as will incline their hearts to his words. He gave everybody a level playing field. Nobody is mighty anymore. Nobody is great anymore. Because when situations called for the strength of men, their strength failed and they had no answer. When disease came, they panicked. The, 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 the wisest of them and the most powerful, they panicked. They didn't have no response until today. All we still keep hearing is wear your face masks, wash your hands and social distancing. That's it. That's it. Even the strongest and the most advanced of nations. Should I talk about the economic mountain? How mighty corporations began to dump their stocks like little babies. How the governments are just printing money now and bringing, bringing big creative with stimulus packages, watering down the economy and interest rates drop to zero. The strongest and the most potent weapon in the hand of the government in times of financial crisis are the interest rates. They brought it down to zero. Crude oil, which has been the world's most powerful commodity for decades, centuries maybe, traded at minus. People were being paid to receive delivery of crude oil. These things are messages, guys. These things are, these things are messages. Do you not understand the, the financial times? Do you not understand the economic times? Do you not understand the political times? Iraba umbra adima kozailos. Do you not see the most, the most prominent man in the world, the number one citizen of the earth, who just comes and speaks nonsense at will? Unchecked. Unchecked. <laughs> it comes, come on. Listen to me. The powers have been taken away from those who claim or who appear to be powerful. God, they, God covered them with waters. He covered the whole earth with waters so that those who thought they were powerful were shown that they were nothing. I would say the nations are like a drop in the bucket and their princes are like grasshoppers before the Lord. And God proved it to the earth that they are only humans and he is immortal. But dwelling in us, those of us who belong to the family of God, is the spirit of the immortal. For there is a spirit in man, the inst inspiration of the Almighty that gives them understanding. Listen, it is that understanding that will set you aside in the times that we're coming into. It is the understanding that comes by the spoken word of God, by the breath of God. There is a breath. There's a spirit of God in man. The breath, the inspiration of the Almighty, the breath of the Almighty, the one he breathed into Adam. And Adam became a living functional soul. Adam became a governor by the breath of God. He assumed position of dominion. He, he, he entered, the breath was a swearing in into an office. He was sworn in into his office. The office as the custodian, the keeper of peace in the realm. The, the man who rules and reigns, who sits upon the throne, the circles, malibra andos of the realms of men. And when Adam sold out, he relinquished the throne. And the devil took temporary custody until the word of God was revealed 2020 years ago. And he took back the dominion and he gave it back to the church. And so we wave the flag of victory, not because we are strong, but because he is strong. Alika Kusa, and he gave us the bragging right, Malika, to confront the powers of hell and to tell them you were defeated. He made a public triumph over them. That was his often spoiled principalities and powers. Triumphing over them in victory, he made a public spectacle, a public show of the powers of darkness. Isn't that what God did again in 2020? He made a public show. Listen to me. Governments and tech companies and fashion companies and pharmaceutical companies, these are the masks that principalities and powers, thrones and dominions, rulers of dark places and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places, these are the masks that they put on. Systems and policies and governments and economies and, and, and laws and decrees, these are the things and, 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 and institutions set up in the name of civilization. These are the masks that have been put on by this invisible wicked spirit. And God, once again, 2,000
2020 years after Christ died, he showed the inhabitants of the earth again that the wind victory flag is still intact and waving. God covered the earth with trouble again. And he made a public spectacle of the wisest of men. He rendered them impotent, useless, and powerless, clueless. But at a voice, at a sound, the waters receded. The sound, I told you, is the voice of the servant of God. Declare the word of God and the waters will recede so that new mountains can arise. The new mountains in fashion will arise. The new mountains in politics are arising as I speak. The new mountains in economy, in education, in family, in media, in sports. New mountains are arising and these mountains will represent the intentions of God. They will carry the name of God and they will do the will of God. And they will be content. They will rejoice in the ways of God. For God is making the highway. And it's reserved for those who have submitted a will to carry out the will of the immortal God, the mighty God. And listen to me, no matter what your life looks like, just bring it to God. Let me close the Bible here. There's so much I will have read to you, but I want to make this short and sharp. I'm going to pray for you now. I want to challenge you tonight. I don't care how tough your situation is or how damaged your life seems like, bring it to Him. And I'm telling you, times have changed. Times have changed. You stand a better chance now. We stand a better chance now. We are living in the most exciting and the most amazing times ever. Forget about the coronavirus. Forget about the pandemic. Forget about the economic meltdown. It is for the wasted world. It is not for the sons of God. Listen to me. As these things begin to unfold, mountains are revealed. And mountains are men. Malibra Andos. Mountains are men. And as the waters begin to recede, the mountain, the Bible says, in the ten, on the first day of the tenth month, the top of the mountains were seen. For, for 150 days, the water continued to recede. In Cabra Andos, for 150 days, the waters continued to recede until the top of the mountain was seen. And guess what? The ark that carried the survivor of the apocalypse, the, 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 the ark settled. On the town, on the it towered on the mountain, on the mountain called Ararat. Barika undebalena irus benedos kabaylos iklabarin kalabadia kabasaile irus valadis. Listen to me, this ark. Malikra Ados, there is that. Listen to me, the water is still receding. There is still water. But I'm telling you, those who make their way into the ark, you will settle at the top of the mountain. You cannot settle in the valley. I'm telling you. You will settle at the receding of the water. The ark settled at the top, at the peak of the mountain. But these are new mountains. Ekaritu baradina makosa. These are new mountains. I don't know what field God has called you into. I don't. I don't. I don't know what space. God has called you into. I don't, I don't know what field God has called you into. Your, your own land where your, 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 your mark must be felt. Where your exploit must be done to glorify the name of the Lord. The reason why God sent you into the earth. The area where God sent you to be a solution. You're not a waste of space. God has plans for your life. Just come to him. This is the time of revealing. God is unveiling his warriors and his champions who will wave the flag of victory. The strength of the house of Saul will fail and the strength of the house of David will increase. It means the strength of the man-made people, the man-made government, the man-made institution, everything that represents the intention of humanism, man, man and man, six, six and six, the strength will wither. And everything that represent, represents the intention of God, the seventh man, the man of the seventh day, the man who rests whilst God works, that is the man of the seventh day. That is the house of David. And the strength of the house of David will increase. That was says, in the day of the Lord, in the day of his strength, his people shall be willing. I hope you will be among those that are willing. Those that are willing to carry the name of God and shout His praise to the ends of the earth. Your life will be to the praise of God. Your family will be to the praise of God. Your career, your business, your endeavor, your ministry will be to the praise of God. 
I want to pray for you again tonight. And of course, I'm going to offer you another invitation to come into the family of God. This is the winning side. This is the house where mountains are made and set up. In Carlos Calava. And the mountains that come from this house will star, stand high above every other mountain. It will dwarf every other mountain. Everything that has been great in the earth will be small. I'm telling you. We're coming into the time. It will begin to unfold in the next few weeks. And few months. Currencies are being destroyed while gold is becoming powerful. Gold is an element created by God. Currencies were made by men. Interest rates were created by men. These things will weaken and become powerless. And God will become powerful again. For he is a mighty God. Clothed in power and majesty. He is God. And so if you would say, Lord, have mercy on me. According to your riches and mercy. Your kindness has drawn me to you again tonight. For you have chosen to speak to me. By your mercy, you did not consume me. And so I ask that your grace goes to work over my life, to purify me, to qualify me for what I'm probably not qualified for. That I may have a right standing with you. That I may become a member of your family, a citizen of your kingdom. Wipe away my past. Give me a new beginning. And give me your spirit to teach me the life that I have now received. I no longer live for myself, but I live to please your goodwill in Jesus' name. If you pray that prayer, boom, boom, boom. Welcome to the family of God. Welcome to the bright side of life. And I pray for you in the name of Jesus that joy unspeakable will begin to bubble from your spirit. A water will spring up on the inside of you and it will well up onto eternity. That every question in your heart will be answered. That God will give you wisdom that transcends your age, that transcends your time, that men will marvel at the wisdom that God will display and the power that God will wield through your life. That you will be a wonder to your generation and you will be among the mountains, strong and mighty that God is raising in your time. Your top will be high. God will give you visibility. Men will stand on your mountain. And God will make you a voice in the earth. You will not be little, you will not be small. You will not be intimidated. The Lord will not allow the hand of the wicked to fall upon you. A thousand may fall at your, at your side. Ten thousand by your right hand. Only with your eyes would you see the reward, of the reward of the wicked. It will not come close to you. The disease will not touch you. The arrows that fly by day will not touch you. The pestilence that moves by night will not come near your dwelling. For the Lord will be your everlasting light. It will shield and it will cover you. In the name of Jesus. And listen to me. Prosperity is coming to your home. You will not be poor. You will have abundance. You will be blessed to be a blessing. In the name of Jesus. And all who live in your time will call you blessed. Your womb is open. In the name of Jesus. And God will give you a child of destiny. A child who will carry the name of God and who will do God proud in the earth. And you will be glad that God made you a custodian of such a life. In the name of Jesus. Your confusion will be removed. Your darkness will be replaced with light. You will no longer be confused. I rebuke panic attack. I hear it in my spirit. I rebuke panic. You're watching me right now and you have panic attack. When it comes, you begin to panic. You're scared like the world is coming to an end the next minute. I rebuke panic attack. And when it comes, you make a costly mistake. And it takes you years and months and weeks to recover. And then the attack comes again when you're about to get settled. It is a frustration and, and a torment that comes. The Bible says fear is a torment. It brings torment. But love brings peace and freedom. And so I quiet you with the love of God tonight. I rebuke the spirit of fear. And I cause it to leave you alone. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Be free. In the name of Jesus. And let the peace of God guard your heart. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you so much again for listening to me again tonight. Apostle Victor Ida is my name and this is Live Spring Assembly right in the heart of London. Um, you can catch up on all our messages on YouTube, Live Spring Assembly, 
of course on my, on my Facebook page, yeah, all, all my messages are there, Thursdays, um, Fridays and Sundays, you can just go down by timeline, you see all of them there, uh, of course, and then you can head to YouTube, and if you want to listen back to them, um, probably when you're out and about, you can head to SoundCloud and all the audio files are there. Live Spring Assembly or Ellison London. Check us out on Instagram, Ellison London, Ellison underscore London, and on Twitter, Ellison London underscore. Um, and God is going to bless you. Share the messages across um, um, your platforms and, uh, and let it reach as many people as it can reach. As it continues to bless them, you will begin to receive your dividend of being a stakeholder in God's business which is saving the world. Until I come your way again on Sunday, keep keeping the kingdom. Um, I love you so much. God loves you. And I will see you on Sunday. God bless you. God bless you.